This video is entitled, You Can't Hide Forever. Why am I making this video? Why I'm making this video is to present my view on the current events that are happening in the world. It is called a pandemic. It is uh, called whatever you want on the news. There's a lot of fear being pushed through that is affecting all of our minds. But what I want to put through is a message of hope, a message of solutions, a message of my understanding having seen this barrage of information coming to me nonstop from various government and non-government organizations, from medical sources, from scientific research sources. And this is just an off the cuff amalgamation of all the information I've listened to and to try to get people to understand that we can't hide forever. You know, I, I, I'm a computer guy. I work on the computers a lot. I love computers, technology and everything. But I do know that the sun, vitamin D, as an example, has been shown scientific evidence, just Google this stuff yourself, that it boosts your immune system. Why do people get the flu in the winter time? It's because they're outside in the air less. They're not absorbing the vitamin D from the sun, which actually gets manufactured in your skin. But the interesting thing though, is that people have believed and trusted the news sources telling them that the sun would give you skin cancer. But the interesting thing is, where were those news sources funded from? There are companies that make sunblock. And inside the sunblock, at least the chemical ones, there's a lot of carcinogenic substances. So I posit this idea that gave me the conclusion that the carcinogenic means cancer causing. So when you start putting cancer causing chemicals on your skin to block out the sun that they're, they're, they're told is the, is the cause of the cancer, you could say the guy got skin cancer because he was out in the sun, but not because he was putting carcinogens on his skin. So what I'm trying to say is that you have to figure out who do you listen to. I say you listen to all the information, whether it agrees with you or disagrees with you, without fully believing at all, and ask for proof. Where's the research information from? There's a few fallacies in arguments that are called because everybody else is doing so. So that's the argumentation to tradition. We've done this forever, so it must be the correct thing to do. There were a lot of horrible things in the past that were done for thousands of years that was completely barbaric. To, to use that argument that it's the only thing to do is a false argument. But what I'm seeing is this, is that there's a lot of different information coming out and just like in every spy novel, just like in every um, mystery novel, where you have like people that stand to benefit from a crisis, from a certain a situation happening, you have to ask the question, who were these first people? Those are the first people that are actually get asked in a crime scene that have the benefit to gain from the thing. So I've heard these groups of people, they call them the leads, they call them the controls of the world, talking about how they wanna reduce the world population down to 500 million and also use control of birth to keep it that way in, in together with like world carrying capacity. I don't know what, what the excuse is, but in the 
if I remember correctly, in the 1980s, look this up on Wikipedia or anywhere else. It's called the Georgia Guidestones. Imagine a message such as this being put into stone and being written in the, all the world's major languages, including English, French, I don't know, eight languages. So that's a lot of major languages that you're putting out your message through. And then when you see this message, this idea manifesting over time, you become kind of like open to kind of like thinking is that, is this part of the plan? Like for example, I was watching a TED talk with Bill Gates. Bill Gates said it, I'm paraphrasing this obviously, look up the TED talk. He basically put it like this. It is an uncomfortable notion to talk about letting grandma die, but then you could hire 10 teachers, right? So instead of thinking about the economy as being a non-zero sum game, meaning that it can grow to take care of young people, old people, all kinds of people, is to say that there's not enough resources. There's a scarcity mentality that grandma is taking up too much resources to live, right? Imagine that kind of thinking. And then you go back in history to the father of Bill Gates, who was sitting on the board of Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood, the founder, got an award from Hitler. So Margaret Sanger, she's called. She was really racist, but I don't want to go into there. But the point is this, is that does the fruit fall far from the tree? But then the question also becomes, should we not judge the tree by the fruit that it produces? So for example, do you remember during that Zika thing? Bill Gates gave, it, gave another speech, right? Where he's opening up a jar He's like, oh, we could have a genetically engineered a Zika virus mosquito. And oops, I released all these Zika virus mosquitoes. He opens up a jar with mosquitoes in it, right? And everybody claps. Really? You laugh at a homicidal maniac that laughs about such a sick disease? That's another thing you could look up. It's been everywhere. And then on top of that, yeah, I haven't researched this fully, but my understanding is those Netflix specials regarding pandemics, where the hero is Bill Gates with a vaccine, was sponsored by Bill Gates. Like, what's up? Well, like, what's up with that? So you have something that's been pre-programmed into our minds. Uh, there, there was another movie. I forget what it's called. But anyways, it, it, it's also another one. So it's predictive programming. And you know, guess who the heroes are? The vaccines. But then you look further into the rabbit hole and you see since the 1980s that all liabilities for putting out a bad product. So let's say you eat a bad supplement product, you could sue the company for hurting you. You know, you have to prove scientifically in court, all that good stuff. Imagine you take that away from a, uh, companies that manufacture things that get injected into millions of people. That's what happened. You basically don't get told, you don't get full form, for informed consent whenever you vaccinate. But there's a little vaccine insert sheet that gets thrown out all the time for pretty much every vaccine. And of course it says the side effects. Some of those side effects of course include death, Asperger's and all these other horrible things. And I think they also damage people's immune systems for future reference. Like for example, how come they, they couldn't cure the flu? It's because it's always mutating. So let me put it to you this way. I don't think there's a possibility to make a vaccine that actually truly works to stop the pandemic stuff. Because it's just going to mutate 
and you can't guess the strain. And it's been proven fact that the flu vaccine actually never guessed the next flu, next year's strain of uh, mutated flu. And you just actually lower your immune system by taking it because it has a lot, all these different chemicals and the vaccine company making it has no liability whatsoever. So imagine you had a freaking scam where you have no liability. You could put out, put, make it as dirty as possible, use whatever ingredients you want, heavy metals, whatever. It doesn't matter. There's no liability. So there's no quality control, but there's quality control on every other product, right? You take a bad supplement, you sue the company. You know, even, even with drugs, I think, uh, uh, a bunch of the drug companies, they get sued all the time if there's a side effects from there. But the vaccine makers, there's a special secret court. You have to get a special lawyer that specializes in that specific, knows how to even do it. So, basically put, only the people that know about the secret court can actually file a claim that is done in secret and getting paid off billions in secret. So billions got put away for this vaccine fund. But then, you know, you have Fauci on the things saying, we will stop the lockdown when nobody ever dies again from the, you know, the bad thing that we're all supposedly supposed to be scared of. I'm not saying that we're not supposed to be, but where are the news stories? There should be 101 different precautions and ideas that should be put out that everybody should be taking vitamin c vitamin d you could get it from the sun but no stay in your house wear a mask be afraid of the sun skin cancer wear the put the cream on which actually blocks out the idea of creating the vitamin d that doesn't help you boost your immune system i'm not saying sit in the sun for like 12 hours a day until you're baked until your skin falls off no, I'm saying like normal time, half an hour, an hour, whatever. Like as much as you can handle. Over time, it builds up. <sighs> Nobody's talking also about zinc. Zinc, if you search the term zinc and antiviral, apparently there's millions of studies. Maybe not millions. I'm obviously hyperbolizing it. But there's enough studies from reputable sources, from major universities that point out that zinc has antiviral properties. What is this pandemic stuff? It's a virus thing. So we should be thinking about that. Another thing, a couple weeks ago, I made a whole video about antimicrobial copper actually does, not allowing viruses and bacteria to live on top of it. So I linked to the research study. Maybe I'll link it below. Maybe you could search for it yourself. Antimicrobial co copper. And actually, it has been approved as an anti for its antimicrobial properties and should be implemented in all public places. So let's say you have a handrail on the subway, on the trains, everywhere that people, mass amounts of people are touching it, it's actually gonna become a coating that kills bacteria. I've actually seen a CNN report from a couple years ago. I think it's called Killing Bacteria with Copper. It's a 2013 report where they were showing a hospital in Peru which had the, the rails the bed rails of where the patients are lying down and everything else that people are touching, such as sinks covered in copper. What that means is that viruses and bacteria can not live on it for more than a few minutes. There's also, I saw a report with, it's called, the company is called Sterile Ray. It has a patented 222 nanometer uh, UV light that could be used for disinfecting an area. I, I still don't feel comfortable with it being used. Apparently it's okay for uh, mammals and humans and all that stuff to be used while they're there. But I still think like su such UV lights could be used in a room that say like people leave for 10 minutes, the UV goes and kills off the bacteria. But I say, let's cover stuff with copper first. What I personally did was I covered handles with copper in my home, toilet handle, uh, the sink handle, the door handle, the front door handle as I'm coming in. So basically put until I get to wash my hands in my home with good soap, I'm not spreading the stuff on the surface. And even if I did, the copper would not allow it to live.
So this is this is the solutions that I'm I'm talking about. What I'm hearing on the news is more like, hey, be afraid, economy shut down. So let me ask you this: How long can we live without food? If all the jobs are gone, if millions of people can't feed for themselves. Also, I've actually seen reports of places like Walmart. They have a seed rack, you know, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, whatever things that have seeds of to plant your own garden. It being cordoned off with a yellow tape saying it's a non-essential object and you can't buy it. Really? So, and also what my question becomes like this. So every business, what we're being told with the shutdown is that every business other than a Costco, a CVS, a major corporation, a Walmart is an essential business. Liquor stores, of course, are essential. Like we can't have people live without alcohol and drinking alcohol every day. No, we can't have that. But things like clothing, that's not essential. And, but my question becomes like this, is that who is to decide what is essential? And what's your definition of essential? They're, these businesses require to be open and it is essential for them to operate in order to feed their family. We can't all rely on the government, but if we have things being blocked off to plant your own seeds, to plant your own garden as being non-essential, I think that's ridiculous. Who is deciding this? Who is essential and who is not essential? Or is this a power grab? Or is this a way to get people to be scared and to accept what these guys were talking about in these big, big, giant Stonehenge looking tablets that say we have to have 500 million people? The Georgia Guidestones. I don't know, just decide for yourself. You have these people keep talking about it. Bill Gates laughing about it, all these other guys. And then we're supposed to believe that they're trying to help people. So this guy, Bill Gates says, oh, if grandma didn't live, we could have 10 more teachers. Uh, and then he says, oh, I love grandma. Now that we have the Coronas. Really? Your father is part of a eugenics organization started by Margaret Sanger. If you read her works, horrible. And, you, and none of that affected your mind thinking. And then you keep getting told, oh, they're philanthropy, philanthropy. And then these vaccines that get, get given to um, people in Africa, actually I get caught having the woman's hormone that she gets when she's pregnant to be laced in there, that the body becomes allergic or creates an immunity against having children, spontaneous abortions. Oh, those vaccines, oh, interesting. So, I'm not here to create fear. I'm here to create empowerment, to use the wisdom of the ages. Judge the tree by the fruit. Don't believe liars. Search out for the sources yourself. Listen to everything. But for me, it, it kind of became a, a situation like this. Companies like CNN, MSNBC, they've been caught lying over and over and over again, nonstop. You know, probably, you know, dozens could be documented in a year, if not hundreds of times that they're lying. And they have all the resources to double check, fact check this stuff. They're saying everybody else is a bad guy. Meanwhile, they're putting out false information, fake news. So for me, it kind of becomes like a situation. If CNN told me the sky was blue, I would like turn around. I'm like, okay, it is blue. I, I checked it for myself. So that's how, that's how I'm putting it. What I'm putting it through is that when we do our own research, when we figure these things out, when we boost our own immune systems, when we talk about solutions, because if we don't have a running economy, we can't feed the people. We need to be able to feed ourselves. And waiting for a couple years for a vaccine to come out that is gonna require a chip under the skin. For those that you know believe in revelations of you know the Bible, the Christianity, it talks about a mark of the beast, you know, basically a chip to buy and sell. 
So if you don't get this vaccination stamp underneath your skin, which you can't even cut out, then you can't buy or sell. You can't have a job, you can't travel and all of that. You're a bad guy. But then, even though the vaccine is being created by serpents that have no liability for what's getting put in it, and my understanding also a lot of it is actually being manufactured, guess where? China, yay! We don't need to make medicine in our own country. That's too tough. We need to rely on other countries. So how, how do I put this? The best way not to fear is to face the circumstances the way they are. And always think about like, what is the solution to this? How can I best protect myself? Boosting the immune system, all that good stuff. I'm not saying this virus isn't deadly. I'm not saying that, but the way that I see it is that if you could build up your immune system as much as you can, that increases your survivability. And by being healthy yourself, you actually free up the opportunity for those people that, you know, need it, that room and let's say in the hospital to get that treatment that they require. But then we also have to explore the, the different alternatives. The hydroxychloroquine being searched by French studies that cured everybody that doing it. A great Jewish doctor also, I saw him on video. Uh, he also used the same regimen and was curing like 300 people within hours of giving them. Hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, z and zinc 225 milligrams. It's like, uh, it's a formula. What if this stuff works? What if for like less than a couple hundred dollars, we could have people be able to go, go back to work, go back to their own businesses. Is that too much to ask? You know, I understand these uh, people that benefit a lot from such pandemics to grab the power can benefit, but I mean, we have to protect ourselves. We have to protect our families. And that's why I put out this video. I put out this video to tell you that you have everything within you. That the body is made perfect. The image of God to be able to protect itself from all viruses, bacteria. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Remember that? Remember those stories about not trusting the serpent? About judging the tree by the fruit that it bears? A good tree is going to have a good man out of the goodness of his heart is going to have good fruit. So, another way of putting it, what you do speaks so loudly, I cannot hear what you're saying. I'd rather see a sermon any day rather than hear one preached. Someone taking action, someone protecting themselves, somebody taking the leadership roles that we can all take and become better, become healthier, become stronger, taking new opportunities, taking the current technology, going and researching new information, learning to uh, do a lot more stuff online, learning computer networking technology. Look, we have the ability to trade between each other in such phenomenal ways that we could actually have an age of discovery, of wonder, of technologies and life extension and happy people and ever expanding economy and a healthy environment that protects the environment. And it's all possible with this, with the mind, whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe it can achieve. All right, my friends, I'll see you in the next one. Have a great one. Bye-bye.